So Matt, beyond what will be happening at Bowie, um, is there any plan in place or discussion yet about other minor leaguers? Will there be a way for them to get on the field this year? Yes, definitely discussion. Uh, nothing firm as of now. It's something we definitely want to do. Uh, and we're hoping to get that opportunity. Uh, and, you know, just things are so hard to plan uh, at this moment. But, you know, as many players as we're allowed to have and for as long as we're allowed to have, we want to take advantage, you know, of that opportunity. So uh, th there have been uh, discussions, uh, but nothing has been set in stone or any type of framework outside of just, just, just speculating. If it came to fruition, Matt, would that be Sarasota? I believe so. But again, it's hard to know. It's hard to speculate, uh, especially with the current state that Florida's in. Uh, you know, so that would be, that would make the most sense. And that would be what I think uh, we would want to do with our facility down there. But I'm not, we could get creative too if we had to. John Mioli, you're up next. Go ahead, John. How's it going, Matt? Hey, man. Um, <clears throat> I know it's probably difficult to say since you don't know who exactly will be there uh, once the season starts in terms of pitchers at Bowie, but Mike talked a little bit about how there would be starters lined up behind every big league starter just for depth purposes. How much, how firm are those plans to keep guys on a regular schedule, and and, and how developed is that on your end to see you know, who might be pitching on what days to back up which guys? That's uh, definitely part of the plan. Uh, it's what we're working on right now. Uh, I, I think it's still a little fluid as we're not exactly sure who is going to be where, uh, you know, at the start of the season. But whenever that does get finalized, we'll start slotting guys in where uh, the major league team would like us to, and, and we'll follow – the, the protocol as close as we can so that, you know, we can be ready in, in the case that any of these guys are needed. Dan Conley, you're up next. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Matt. K kind yeah. of a, uh, a two-part question here. First of all, uh, we've heard a lot of the guys going to – some of the top prospects going to the overflow camp. Have not heard anything about two of the younger guys in Grayson Rodriguez and Gunnar Henderson. What, what you know, plans will you have for them? And secondly – how do you guys, and I know Mike's a large part of this, but I'm sure your input is too. How do you guys kind of decide who's going there? Because I know, you know, you believe in all these guys, and I'm sure that some of them feel like, well, we're not getting invited. I'm not as high up on the, on the pecking order. So how do you kind of, you know, get that delicate balance? Well, first and foremost, we wish we could bring everybody. You know, that's, that's just the case. We wish we could have every single player, every single player there. Uh, but when it, comes down to the basic function for what this is, is it is a major league operation that we have to protect and serve the major league team. And so that is what is first and foremost being thought about when it comes to bringing players to this camp. And, you know, with the rules that, that, that Major League Baseball has put in about these camps, where if you bring a player and you, have, you want to take them off the list, you, you know, you basically have got to release them. You know, we're, we're being pretty careful about those decisions, uh, you know, and we've got some time, so we're not necessarily rushing to make those decisions. I, I think once the major league season gets off and running and we know, you know, how the health is of players and how this whole thing's going to operate, more decisions uh, will be made. So, you know, I, for me, it, it's just tell all the players to be patient, and uh, we would like to get as many of them here as we can. And, and specific plans, perhaps, for uh, Henderson and, and uh, Rodriguez? I mean, they're obviously, you know, players that uh, have uh, a big future with us and, and guys that, that uh, we want to work with. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see them, you know, as soon as, as soon as possible. But, again, you know, we have to serve the major league roster first. And so until, until that is firmed up, completely, you know, it, we can't make those decisions. So, and, and that, that's ultimately also, you know, a, a Brandon Hyde and a Mike Elias uh, decision. So, you know, we'll, whatever they feel is best for, for the major league team, uh, you know, is, is what 
is what we're obviously going to go with. Rich Dubroff, you're up next. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, Matt, speaking of, the, speaking of that, one name that was prominent in spring training but we haven't heard yet is Bruce Zimmerman. Uh, are, there, are there immediate plans to add him to uh, the Bowie camp? Uh, I mean, immediate, immediate is kind of a vague word. Is it like tomorrow or in the future? I mean, I, I would imagine that, that he would be a part of the camp at some point. I mean, I, I can't say for sure, but um, it's, that's very sim very similar answer to, to 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 Rodriguez and Henderson, where um, as soon as Elias and, and Hyde feel like it's the right time to bring those these guys, then uh, then we will, you know. And if that time doesn't come, then we won't. So it's it, it's hard, it's really hard for for me to say because uh, it's it's really not my um, wheelhouse, I guess you could say. David Loria, you're up next. Go ahead, David. Hey, Matt. Uh, which aspect of player development is most compromised by not having a minor league season? Is it hitting, pitching, defense, something else? And I'm thinking evaluation as well as the actual development. I mean, in, in reality, everything. You know, I mean, we, it's really hard to replicate live competition, live speed of the game, adrenaline, you know, in, in, in just an off season type of mode, you know, so hitters not getting live at bats and, and pitchers not getting live hitters to face with runners on base when, when it matters, you know, when your stats are being kept. So all of that is, is definitely um, not ideal. You know, we, we've done, you know, everything that we can to uh, help the players get better, both on the field and off the field, uh, physically, uh, skill-wise, and, and even mentally and culture-wise. But you just can't replicate what a season uh, is without a season. So... Well, I, I do feel like we've made some progress in some areas that would have been more difficult uh, to make if there had been a season, it, which is good. You know, we, we've been productive and, and made the best of, of our situation. Uh, but we obviously wish we were playing baseball. Yeah, a quick follow-up on that, Matt. I assume you're referring at least somewhat to tech when you're talking about making up some of the difference. Is, are either of the, those areas I mentioned more difficult to evaluate with tech alone? Well, the thing about tech is not, not every player has access to it. You know, I, I, a lot of our training has been without tech, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's been either via video, uh, you know, through either they're sending videos or through FaceTime or through uh, group conversations or discussions or educational webinar type of stuff or mental skills. So uh, each player is a little different in terms of what they have access to and, and what they can physically do. Um, and each player is going to get more out of what they, you know, the player, some players are going to get more out of it because they're going to put more into it. Some are going to be more engaged than others. And you know, you wish and you hope everybody is is 100% engaged and locked in, but you know that's not the reality. But some players are, are going to make bigger improvements than others, and that, that's going to be based on what 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 they put into it. John Mioli, you're up next. Go ahead, John. Hey, Matt. In terms of some of the pitchers there, like Dean Kramer, Keegan Aiken, guys who are on the roster. Are they going to be part of the group that's slotted in to be kind of the next man up and ready to come up, or are they going to be focused more on developmental stuff? Which players did you say again? Uh, Kramer and Aiken, the guys who are on the 40. Um, I mean, I would say they have a chance. You know, I, I would say every player who's part of the 60-man theoretically has a chance uh you know the, the guys that are in Baltimore right now versus the guys that are in Bowie right now probably are a little closer you know in terms of their chance but I, I would say these guys are working towards that opportunity and 
you all have seen it. You know, you've covered baseball a long time, and you know a lot of different things can happen and the right situation on the right day with the right person. So I, I would say these guys are preparing as if as if they may get the call. And and that's that's the right way to go about it. Rich Dubroff, you're up again. Go ahead, Rich. Matt, is there a possibility that the guys in Bowie could play sort of extended spring training games against uh, the Phillies? minor leaguers or the Nationals minor leaguers? Is that a possibility? We thought it might be, but I don't think it is. I, I don't think that, that we are allowed to do so, at least not at this point. It, it's something that, I mean, I think everyone has interest in playing games. Everybody wants to play games, but we also have to do our due diligence to make sure that we don't um, compromise the health and safety of the major league team. And so whatever those safety precautions are, which right now, you know, I, I think Major League Baseball is doing a good job with that uh, and and all the rules. And, and I know that the Major League camp and the camp in Bowie, we're, we're taking it very seriously, uh, the, the health and safety protocols. And so w whatever guidelines we're told to follow is, is what we're gonna do. Joe Trezza, you're up next. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, good morning. Um, what are the realistic developmental goals for a guy like Yusnel Diaz this summer? You know, a guy who probably would have spent most of the year at AAA or at least a big chunk of it, um, but now, you know, won't. And, you know, compared to a guy like Mountcastle who had a full year at AAA or a guy like Aiken who had a full year at AAA already. Um, and does the layoff kind of – like, is he in kind of a limbo – space where the limp where the layoff kind of affects him a little more um and second question if theoretically everybody has a chance what do you think the chance is uh for Adley Rutschman to debut this year <laughs> <laughs> all right let's start with question number one um sure. Diaz uh yeah so you know he's been there now a few days uh he's going to be working out defensively all three outfield positions uh we'll, we'll work with him uh, early work type of stuff, but also trying to get him as many live reads as possible in the outfield. Uh, so, you know, just continuing to improve there uh, physically. You know, our, our strength and conditioning and performance staff is is going to, you know, he's a high priority there in terms of, you know, continuing to turn him or help him get even more stronger, athletic, and um, dynamic. Uh, and then offensively, you know, our, our staff is, is taking a pretty aggressive approach in terms of uh, challenging him and, and uh, providing him with, with game-like difficult practice. You know, try, trying to put him in an environment uh, or provide him with problems that he may see uh, at the AAA or Major League level in terms of uh, – you know, stuff or situations. So, uh, you know, he, he's, he's, been, he's been talked to about that and he's on board with it. And uh, we're excited to try and help him improve the, just the consistency of, um, of his batted ball profile. I, I think that that's one of the big things for him is continue to hit the ball hard, uh, hit it in the air and try to hit it a long ways. Oh, and then the other one. Uh, yeah, I, I imagine – you know, everybody's interested in that question. Uh, he is on the 60 man. So, you know, there is a chance. Uh, that's really not my, my call. I, I would say, you know, it's probably a better question for Mike and uh, Brandon, but, you know, we're, we're going to work, work with him hard every day. And, you know, whenever he's ready, he's ready. You know, so I, it's really hard for me to answer that question. Steve Molesky, you're up next. Go ahead, Steve. So, Matt, in the past, with the draft picks, there might be an orientation. Eventually, they get to an affiliate. But now, in this very unique year, what, is, what happens to the draft picks after signing? That's a very uh, on-time qu uh, question. We, we actually are starting tomorrow with virtual uh, new player orientation. Uh, it'll be twice a week. We'll be meeting twice a week, uh, different topics to introduce them to our organization, our culture, our people, each other, 
players, uh, or the history of the Orioles, some fun things, some educational things. So uh, yeah, that, that starts tomorrow and we've got all the guys uh, locked in and it should be, uh, should be fun to get to know them and, and get them caught up to speed so that whenever they do get on the ground with us in person, uh, that learning curve is a little shorter and, and we're able to you know, get, get off and run it. Jeff Arnold, you're up next. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Matt, thanks for doing this. Um, Mike Bauman uh, was one of the guys that reported to Bowie's camp. He's somebody that's probably pretty close to, to getting an opportunity. As he tries to kind of go from a, a really good year that he had last year in Frederick and then Bowie and take, you know, the next step to get to the major leagues, what's a thing or two he needs to improve on for that to happen? You know, for a guy like him who's who's talented and um, he's got great mental makeup as well, it's just about becoming more refined and consistent. You know, he, he's just uh, – the big leagues, typically the difference is between players in high A and double A is that they do it more often, more consistently. And so for him, it's just being able – to repeat, to execute, uh, and, and and to be able to perform at a major league caliber level more consistently. And so that's what, you know, he's going to continue to get the reps and be put in those situations to where he gets closer and closer to being able to do that. Dan Conley, you're up next. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Matt, another two-parter. The first one was prompted by Steve, so it's Molesky's fault. But just to follow <laughs> up on, on his – any of the uh, new draftees expected to be at the 60-day uh, camp? Are there plans for that yet? Um, and secondly, uh, Ryan Mountcastle, as far as defense is concerned, obviously everyone knows he, he hit AAA last year. Um, but, you know, even Brandon talked about, you know, trying to get his, his defense in left field short up. How difficult is that with, you know, with no real game time ex experience, you know, now? I mean, you, obviously you can do whatever you can to replicate things, but obviously you can't do, you know, exact game situations for him and is there someone who's kind of being assigned to him right now kind of almost as a pet project to, to really boost that left field ability okay first question was which player oh no oh, oh the new drafted players new drafted players uh again i i, I, I wish we could have everybody here uh, and i would love all these new players i just can't wait to get to know them and and um, and get them started. Uh, I would say they're probably the farthest away from the major leagues of all players. Uh, so in terms of servicing the major league roster, you know they're they're not the highest priority right now. But in the in the near future, and I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, again, I, I think that's what what Mike and and Brandon are ultimately going to, you know, decide on it, who, who they feel this would benefit the most uh, in this moment. And then also trying to weigh the, the odds of, are we going to have a, a camp later this year for, for the minor leagues? But uh, I mean, I'd be thrilled to have more players and, you know, whoever they are, if they're the new drafted guys or if they're players we already have, you know, we'll, we'll be excited to work with them. Uh, and then the other question on Mount Castle, um, Right now, he's there working in Baltimore every day with Anthony Sanders, who's, who's a, a fabulous outfield and base running coach and person. Um, he's been great to get to know, but he, he works really well. He, he has a long history of development of outfielders. And so uh, he's working with them every day. And to your question about game reps, my opinion is the best way to learn how to play outfield while the game does provide that it's during batting practice you know that's when you get the most live reads in a shorter period of time and so getting out there during batting practice really focusing on getting your, your pre-pitch set up, your timing, your jumps, your routes, uh, challenging yourself uh, to try and go get balls that maybe you wouldn't necessarily be able to get just to see what your range is. 
um, that's that's where you can make the most progress. And so I, I imagine that they're doing early work, they're working on foot, footwork, they're working on fundamentals, uh, but during batting practice, he's probably out there um, for at least a group or two really focusing on that. And so that's, to me, to me, he can do that without having an actual game being played. All right.